All right, let's get into our lower finals. Let's look at the uh, Twisted Minds roster. Uh, first, guys, what do you guys have to say for Twisted Minds? I mean, this team has looked fearsome. Every time we've seen them, they've been playing off meta based on what almost every other team has gone towards in terms of this Orisa comp looking pretty dominant. They've been the one team still committed to the Mauga that they obviously put a bunch of practice time into, but they've been the only team to continue to make it look possible, to make it look like it can work. Their executions with the Sim comp are so clean. Whether it's going in with the TP or kiting out, they're very hard to catch with these ultimates. And so far, the only team to stop them has been Ents and Kevster making, you know, insane play after insane play, Kai as well. Those have been the only players who've been able to punish this comp. And so replicating that success is going to take incredible prowess. Even against Ents, Twisted Minds made it insanely close. I think they still might continue to believe in this comp, still grinding it and still just thinking their execution is on point. And I think, you know, with veterans like Kellex in the back line, keeping everybody focused, the superstar hitters uh, on DPS and tank, this team is very, very scary. And for X Oblivion 8, this is going to be an uphill battle. They are an underdog. They upset Space Station Gaming and Twisted Minds will be an even tougher test. The thing X Oblivion 8 has going for them, though, is their versatility. Chase has been phenomenal on so many different tank heroes, consistently putting X Oblivion in a position to win. Shockwave also been fantastic on the Sojourn. And here is one thing that I would potentially be concerned about if I'm Twisted Minds. Now, when Ents Esports took down Twisted Minds, they provided these other teams, like Ex Oblivion, with a recipe for success. And it just so happens that Shockwave has a great echo as well. Maybe you could put Cookie on the Sojourn, maybe you could let uh, Shockwave play the echo, and maybe you could try to replicate what Ents Esports did. I'm not saying it'll work, but it could be a, 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 an opportunity. There's a yeah, path sure, there, there's a right? blueprint there. It's, we know it's possible. But I think for me watching that Twisted Minds Ends game, I was struck by how hard it looked. Like mm. that was Kevster and Kai at their limit to provide what they needed. And, and for EXO, if this team of, of lesser known rookie players can do it, I would be incredibly impressed. This would be a massive, massive win for the EXO Livione squad. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're starting the, the series with uh, Lee Jang's pick by Twisted Minds. No surprises, right? Anything? Yeah. No? Honestly, Those even Ents took the, took the Rush Mirror with Malga right. here. I think this probably is two of three points. Control Center and Night Market are probably going to be Malga maps. You might not be forced to 100%. Like, you know, we saw EXO win with Doom. Maybe it can maybe it can happen, but yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's that, a natural pick. That, that's the case. Like, it's a good map for Malga, but it's also a good map if you want to try to counter the Malga sure. with Echo and Gardens, for example. All right. Are you guys ready for the lower finals? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Let's All go. right, let's get this show on the road. Tossing it to the casters. Necro Joss, take it away. Thank you very much, Danny the Desk. Yeah, yeah, champion ship Sunday. We're ready. About to get into it. You know, I've not casted the EU all week, but it's been just a ridiculous region to watch. It always is super fun watching uh, the EU powerhouses uh, clash. Rose and Twisted Minds and Exoblivione, they are two of them for sure. Exoblivione, my god, as well. Some of the, well, the most maps played throughout this entire bracket, it's, it's ridiculous. So you'd imagine they're pretty warmed up. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Especially having taken down such a tough opponent in Space Station Gaming. I think that Ex Oblivione are really looking in peak form right now. But you got to look at Twisted Minds on the other side, touted as one of the top teams in EMEA. And yes. honestly, the top three, it's pretty stacked, Jaws. Yes, it is ridiculously stacked right now. I mean, the, the DPS matchup here is ridiculous. It was ridiculous yesterday, too. And I think they were right on the desk to pick up on Shockwave as our kind of one of our star players, right? because the guy is an absolute menace. But on the other side of things, Quartz showed up huge in World Cup, has been one of the biggest DPS, like rising stars for the last uh, year and a half or so, maybe even longer than that, to be fair. Uh, this is going to be Ex Oblivione's hardest challenge yet. Well, the thing is, Rose, it's only going to get harder from here, because even if they make it, they're going to go <laughs> yeah. up against Ents in the finals, right? Li Zhang Tower, first map here. Gardens, Rose, as we uh, unlock the doors. Unlocking the doors and we get a chance to see two very different compositions coming out here. I'm looking at Twisted Minds being off of the Mauga. We have the Ramatra and I feel like this is where we really get to see what Twisted Minds are made of. Yep, the Mauga not to be seen, but the Ram with the uh, Moira of all things. Which is a bit odd. I thought it would look a little bit more Kiriko action. Maybe no Batiste even with uh, the Ram, but Moira... A little bit more unconventional when it comes down to it. Most of NA are picking either one of those. Twisted Minds with a fast rotation, next Oblivioni. They're going to take the house here, but they do end up losing point first. Be careful, pay attention though, because we're looking at Cookie trying to get a big pick here on the Sojourn. Oh. Look at the off angle. Oh, but it's Quartz first. Yeah, Quartz finds the headshot on Crispy. Uh oh. 
Makes Oblivione. They're in bad shape right now. They need to just die or get out, fall off the map. One of the two, they can't spend any longer here. It wasn't the longest fight in the world, but still. I mean, you're expecting Quartz or Cookie, like you said, Rose, to pick up uh, a first initial kill. Are they going to chase all the way to spawn here? I mean, Shockwave is super low. One HP is going to get saved by Crispy. Luckily, that AoE healing coming in clutch as a Winston swap for Exobliviona here. They want to go fast. Yeah, we see Chase swap over to this Winston, usually to dive onto a target. And this is a composition that Exobliviona are very comfortable with. Looking at some of the options that the Twisted Minds have, you're just really looking at Quartz or even jumping on KSA here to shut off the healing with the bubble. Wow, well, not a pick from a Sojourn, it's a pick from your Kiriko. You can't argue with that one. Coalescence, though, from Slay. As soon as that rush digger lay down and uh, Chase in a little bit of trouble, has to jump high in the skies away from that Coalescence. A duplication of the Ram, but matched with the Sound Barrier here. Twisted Minds. Got everything in the book right now for uh, the plays that Eggs of want to throw out. But honestly, a ram on the point with the Nemesis form, the little warm warm. You aren't going to survive too long, unfortunately, especially getting uh, an annihilation that quickly as well. Just in mind to lose the point, invest two support ultimates, but they get 71%. That is the danger of running Echo against a composition like that. If you're Twisted Minds, you're giving over so many different options for Shockwave to be able to duplicate. But the Echo is no more. Shockwave is going to be switching over to the Tracer to have a better duel here with Yubi that's oh, also on the Tracer. What a stick from Yubi. I mean, Shockwave's not even really in this fight either. And I think Twisted Minds knew that, Rose. Just holding tabs, seeing that the sw swap will come through, and then Twisted Minds can go, okay, they got no Tracer, we can just run in. Chase has activated the Primal Rage, but can't really do much damage of it. The mission objective right now for Chase is just to survive. Point is being contested by Twisted Minds as well, as Canal steps on to try and get some more uh, more progress on the point, but ends up getting slain by Quartz. Chase is back in, but for how much longer? Not much longer, that's exactly how long. KSA picks up that kill, and Twisted Minds now on last fight. Any death here from Exoblivioni will be disastrous to their game plan. Already feels kind of disastrous losing Chase so early in this fight because you lose the ability to coordinate as a full team of five as Chase is going to be coming back on sort of his like big ace in the hole, the Doofist. All right, Shockwave's there to touch. Sandbear comes out from Exploivioni, trying to stop Quartz from getting away with murder. Shockwave peeks around the corner. Crispy finding a boot kill on the KSA is a good start. And now Cookie trying to get an angle on Quartz, trying to go for the one for one. Crispy's there to clean up three kills, in fact, for the Lucia. Okay, you take that. 99% for Twisted Minds. Problem is, Rose, Exploivioni, they switch tanks. Not going to have the Meteor Strike. Not the most impactful ultimate. But Twisted Minds, if Yubi lands another Pulse Bomb, Annihilation on the point, like, what? What more can you really do if you're Exoblivioni? This rush is going to have to go ridiculous here. Yeah, maybe if Chase does get the Meteor Strike, it get a little bit of a buff to its damage, but it could be a get-out-of-jail-free card depending on where KSA decides to pop down this Annihilation, but it's not coming up fast enough. It's really not in that pose one from UB. He's trying to find an angle of an attack. There's the rush, just a quick slam on the floor, ends Quartz life pretty quickly. Yubi does find the stick in the end, Rose, does kill Crispy, but it's all for naught here. There's Ex Oblivione utilizing the rush to its full potential, just down towards White Room, and everybody just WM wanting. Almost felt like they set themselves up into a trap, though, with that White Room push. We did see Shockwave throw out the Pulse Bomb. Chase also just punching KSA even a little bit deeper into his own team to potentially get up another pick with the Pulse, but it shut down. Last fight here, Jaws. Oh, Crispy going so deep. Can he get out? Yubi does that towards the back line, helping KSA get into a position where he can do some damage. Cookie ends up going down, but they do trade it for Quartz. A four on four as Annihilation for KSA will make him a hardy foe to deal with on that point. Canel does end up escaping for, for, for how much longer. He's 1 HP. His Slay just gives him the suck from around the side. Twisted Minds have half the point capped. Meteor Strike for Chase. He lands back out onto the floor and Slay, without a fade, ends up end falling over to Chase. But with Quartz and the Disruptor Beam, I mean, Chase is not long for this world as Twisted Minds end up getting a reflip and the point. First point goes over to them on control. But it was so close. 100 to 99. Ex Oblivione made that round very competitive. Even with all of the tank swaps that they made, usually you look at a team doing that and you think, well, how is that going to work? You're giving up so much ultimate charge and you're also giving up so much momentum, having to continue to switch up your compositions. But this is one of the strengths that Ex Oblivione has as a team, is that they're able to flip that switch so easily in between a map. See if, uh... I really want to run here too. 
don't imagine Winston. This is very much a you hold on point and one of the maps you can probably play the Malga in, honestly. Speaking about it a little bit uh, earlier on and yesterday as well with Johnny and Jake about where Malga can really still be played. And this is definitely a point where you could do so, but Hexablade only just disregarding that completely. And they're actually just going over to the Doomfist instead. Decent map for environmentals though, to be fair, Rose. Yeah, and I mean, except Livione haven't necessarily been running the Malk composition. I would expect to see it out of Twisted Minds, if anything. But Shockwave on the Echo has proven to be a formidable force into other Malk compositions, as we saw how Exit Livione approached the matchup versus Space Station Gaming yesterday. So they've got that one figured out. And Twisted Minds, they've had to adapt in the situation to this Rumatra comp to continue to play a very similar style of the Brawl. That's a bit of tech there from Shockwave, just tanking the Disruptor Shock. Just getting a powered up punch. Tries to find an angle in. Does get the punch into the point. Hits Quartz, but Quartz doesn't go off the map. Cookie in trouble now. Had to slide away as KSA saw the Doomfist enter his backline. Thought the same could be said for Ex Obliviones. Now Cookie with a decent angle, but still very hard to like pin anybody down here because of how much cover there is on the point and how far you can play back. Cookie's still trying to get some damage in, but I mean, it's just all Twisted Minds giving them the runaround right now as Crispy ends up going down to Quartz. Ooh, that's a big pick there. It's going to stall out this recontest for Mix of Livione even just a little bit more. And, and to your point, Jaws, when you're running the Doomfist, it can be a little bit tough to try nice to get rush. in there without your cooldowns. Really but as nice I say rush that, on the point. Ooh. Yeah, that rush, the coalescence just doesn't help you really there at all. Spoke about it during the Malga meta rose this moira versus the kiriko the moira does a lot in the neutral in terms of like healing and the healing output's great the damage output's great as well but with the rush versus the coal you take rush nine times out of ten and uh, <laughs> that was case in point right there for sure. I mean, Canal's also been so clean with the Suzus as well. So even if Yubi is trying to land that Pulse Bomb, it's going to be a little bit difficult if Canal is there to be able to get that immortality. Oh, there's the Meteor Strike. Soundbarrier comes out from Twisted Mind super early. Are they going to be able to make use of it? Kalei trying to get onto that point and boot people into the line of sight of Quartz. Who ended up using the Overclock as well. Yubi and Kalei will end up trading here as a Soundbarrier from Exo Bivioni is going to make sure they guarantee at least one more kill with Slay falling. Shock Wave getting at least one. Can he find another? I mean, Quartz is just so far deep into the back line, but still comes up with a kill somehow. I mean, Shockwave at least aids in that one, sure. Excellent by Verne holding down the fort despite losing the majority of their healing so early on. It's kind of impressive how Exoblivione have been able to use the self-sustainability of each of, uh, like, Doomfist, Tracer, just to continue to put the pressure onto Twisted Minds. Twisted Minds can make their way back, and Exoblivione do have to give up the point, but for how long with this overclock? Oh, Cookie! I mean, Kalex just speed ran his own death there, jumping into Cookie with an overclock. Cookie's in a little bit of trouble, though, blocked by that shield, so he can receive the maximum amount of healing required to stay alive. So close, though, was uh, he to go it down. KSA had to back off in the end as the rest of his team is just getting annihilated on the point. Yubi and Slay already dead. Good bit of stagger there, but uh, again, another flip comes through. So scrappy to have these flips come through in quick succession from both of these teams. But Exoblivione, they've got that wombo combo of the Pulse Bomb as well as the Doomfist Punch that they can rely upon for this next fight. And pay attention to where Crispy's going to be too. Crispy on the Lucio has been marking down Quartz time and time again to be able to shut off those angles that Twisted Minds can get. Nice body shot there onto Yubi from that railgun. Slay just get okay, Slay just got one clipped. I uh, know what you can do about that, son. Cookie and Slay end up going down though, so again 4v4, but that annihilation is going to be a big problem for Exolivione. They've got that rush, Rose, but a free capture basically for a one ult trade. You take that any day of the week. KSA is under a lot of pressure now as he pops the Nemesis form to try and stay alive and get out of there. But Canel quickly finishes him off with a Kunai. The beat comes in a little bit too late for Twisted Minds, but they still got a Coalescence in their back pocket. But now they have to contend with a beat from Exolivione. And this being final fight, Twisted Minds switch over to the Doomfist to try and get back in time. Shockwave rounding about and just helping Chase secure these kills on the flank. Crispy finds a boot kill onto Slay as Ex Oblivione find the flip. 4% to go as Twisted Minds just fall and just scatter to the four winds. Kalex end up getting a touch once more, same with KSA, but that will be it. Ex Oblivione end up capping the round and tying up control.
What a big pick there onto Slay to kick off that final fight of this round. As soon as you got that Moira out of the way, you shut off such a big source of healing for the team, and Ex Oblivione timed that perfectly, waited for the Moira fade to be on cooldown, and just went in to nab her. And now, Twisted Minds, Ex Oblivione, they're tied up on this map, and we're gonna have to see what other hero roulette we get out from both <laughs> of these teams, because Jaws, it kind of feels like the Matra from KSA, it, it just was vulnerable to a lot of the poke coming through from EXO. Yeah, the, the poke is sick because you're like, okay, you force out the Nemesis form. And it's like, okay, now we just wait that out. And we're also jumping around your entire team. You have to come and chase us because we're so mobile. And Shockwave is a big part of that too, getting that one clip onto the back line. Looks like Twisted Minds running the Malgacom now, Rose. And look at how Shockwave is so ready for that, to be able to play the Echo. We've seen how Echo can be a counterpick to this hero because of the sticky bombs, and then the focusing beam to just melt that Mauga down. Of course, it can't just stun right there if you saw that. And uh, we'll have to be uh, cognizant of how these teleporters get used too by UB. No bait TP there, speaking of teleport usage. Oh, okay. Well, Cookie just uh, fell over. That's a lot of assists in that kill feed. Did you trade with that focusing beam kill? But the point is capped once again by Twisted Minds first. How long though? I mean, like, I feel like Ex Oblivione, they've been so good at just backing out, giving some space, and now going back in for a quick re-engage. Should spear onto Quartz there, but the Suzu was there just in time. Save them up, make sure they're invulnerable for a brief moment. Another big focusing beam kill there by Shockwave. Once again, and like you mentioned at the very start there, uh, the Mauger is just so susceptible to all the poke from the Echo. The Sticky Bombs obviously do a ton of damage, right? But the Focusing Beam is the main thing that you can just burn the Mauger out. <laughs> Mauger has a huge hitbox, so, uh, <laughs> you know. It's pretty scary. Speaking of scary, there's uh, another Mauger on the field, but this is Ex Oblivione's. I mean, Twisted Minds are thinking it's just as scary, too, as they end up backing out. I mean, Quartz dead, Shockwave uh, has done his job. No kills for the Echo, but he forced Twisted Minds to wholesale get back to spawn and maybe go for a small swap up. UB is close to the sim wall, but how much effectiveness is that? are they really getting? Well, okay, zero oh. now, because he's dead. <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah, UB's been first picked a lot by whether it's a Sojourn or even just like a Kunai from a Kiriko, and UB just will always be a focus fire for this team. Having a teleporter is a great way for Twisted Minds to close the gap on Ex Oblivione and get this engagement quickly. But with that barrier, as you were saying, you can kind of pair that with this overclock from Quartz and make sure that Quartz is unstoppable. TP forward, not a big one, just uh, behind that small barricade. Speaking of war, Rose, there it is. Cookie just completely negated. This ultimate, not going to do much at all. <laughs> you just have to stare at the wall. It's like, <laughs> Twisted Minds, we have the biggest Rhine shield imaginable now, as they find a flip. <laughs> oh, TP. Nice little TP there from Yubi going to server room. Now. Now here comes the overclock from Quartz. Chase is stepping way too far up, but there's the sound barrier. Quartz with a slide in two seconds, manages to get away. And now straight back into the rush, just an ult trade here. Just one for one for one for one. There's the Terra Surge back into him. Quartz does get one kill as Kanel ends up falling over. Yubi surviving for a little bit too long there. A little bit too long for Ex Oblivione's liking. They do have manage to take him out as they end up trading their ultimates. Like, now they're straight back to the Kiriko. They rush in and then slays like well we're already in this team fight i've used my suzu there's not much we can do especially when the terror surge gets popped too but like twisted minds have bought enough time heroes they're up to 65 they're matching extra oblivion now in terms of percent they are and this might be final fight too depending on how long it lasts it's a very scrappy very brawly it is but shortwave has got to do free Malga, but a quick Malga ultimate coming out from ksa i'm not sure Saltwave's going to be able to survive and even get one off of his own there's a suzu it lands onto five people of uh, ex oblivione as yubi gets focused out once more really scared of yubi really building up towards that level three beam damage and just shredding chase focus fire is decent from ex oblivione but it's not enough to see them through this fight 90 percent for twisted minds now 90%, you can see Chase going back over to the Doomfist for a little bit more one-shot potential, and the rollout is a little bit faster, so got to get in there, touch the pit. Sound barrier available for Crispy, though, and as I say that, he instantly activates it. Nice TP away from Quartz, who is on the high ground, now rips the overclock. Chase is trying to just tank for the rest of his team, but Quartz does not care about your front line. A quick two snipes on Cookie and Canal. He's looking for a third there, as Ex Oblivione are just turned to smolder. Overtime is still ticking, but it's only 
Shockwave to touch, and they're not going to be able to get there. Twisted Minds taking the lead in the series. Wow, though, that was a very close map and something that we potentially expected, taking a look at what Ex Oblivione and Twisted Minds both bring to the table. But I wasn't expecting it to be that close, just constant back and forth, taking back control maybe every couple of seconds. And that was some big ult trades at the very end there. But Twisted Minds, they did get the better of that, even just knowing how to use this Malga composition so well. Yeah, the old trade was ridiculous. Like, so, okay, we use the wall. Okay, now we push. We have the rush. Okay, overclock. Okay, and then uh, we're going to back up. And then Terra Surge. Then we'll use our own rush. And then we'll use our own overclock. Like, it was just ult trade, ult trade, ult trade. And it was like two kills for like five ults or something stupid. I don't know how many it was, but not many kills for that many ults being used, which is a little bit ridiculous. But Twisted Minds next to Oblivion, pretty close matchup so far, Rose. And um, a little bit, I don't know, I feel like... Cookie and Shockwave aren't showing up nearly as much here. Maybe it's just Cookie. Shockwave's getting a lot of big damage with the Echo. Quartz is just kind of doing Quartz things. So it's a Cookie versus Quartz situation right now because Yubi and... Uh, sorry, it's a Shockwave versus Quartz situation because Yubi's getting picked off a lot too. And uh, Cookie just not mm -hmm. having the shots they really need to land onto the back line. It's really much... Uh, the so In the Sojin 1v1, Quartz is winning that out. Yeah, Cookie's been a little bit quiet this series, but we have seen from the previous time that Ex Oblivione and Twisted Minds played each other that Cookie can still hold his own versus a soldier in like Quartz. And even just taking a look back at yesterday's match, Cookie was also going toe to toe with the likes of Sparker, which is also very, very impressive. So it might just take a bit of a warm up map to get Cookie going on this sojourn, but Ooh. you could still expect to see some pop offs there. I, Rose, look at this. Yeah. A little ridiculous in terms of KDA. Twisted Minds end up winning the, ma okay. uh, winning the map. 1.7 KDA. <laughs> They're dying a whole bunch, sure. Uh, Ex Oblivione with 4.61. They still end up losing. So, yeah, sometimes in Overwatch, I know it's crazy to think, you can die a lot, but you can still take the map. That's uh, all down to alt trades right there. Winning the important fights too. Uh, not only just alt trades though, but we're also looking at how Ex Oblivione were not too shy to just disengage after seeing an alt come out from Twisted Minds and then go back in. There were a lot of times that Twisted Minds were just allowed to take a point right off the bat. I'm thinking back to Market where Twisted Minds would wrap around to the back of the point. Ex Oblivione didn't want to catch that smoke by playing too much in the courtyard to just get easy access to a headshot there from courts. So uh, Exo, I think, uh, not, yeah, maybe not doing themselves any favors <laughs> with that. It's like, don't worry, guys. I've got, I'm like 22 and 3 right now. We're popping off and then you lose. You're like, ah, okay. Yeah. I'm sure it's happened to everybody out there at some point the in rank, right? Where you're like popping off or your team ends up losing. Still pretty close uh, game so far. And it's going to be a close series, I'd imagine, too. Like I mentioned before, uh, at the very top of this, Ex Oblivione, they have the most maps currently uh, played in, in the bracket. Like a, a ridiculous amount across groups, too. And so you're thinking, very, very scrappy team. And that kind of illustrated it there with how scrappy they can be with the amount of kills they're getting, but still kind of falling behind at the very last moment. Um, I, I would add uh, on top of that as well. It, it also screams good kind of macro game as well from Twisted Minds. A good stall too. Because mm -hmm. if you're just stalling out for a long time, sure, your team's dying, but you're like getting more percent. And then it's like, well, we only need to win one fight. So yeah, Twisted Minds doing a good job on map number one. Busy World up next. There uh, was a ban on Hollywood and a ban at King's Row from either team. And so we're going on to Blizzard World now for Exo's pick. Okay, so I, I could definitely see some Arissa here from Ex Oblivione. I think you could also see some Winston if Chase is feeling up to it on the attack. Uh, we've seen what Chase can do with building up momentum as you see the Wiz Winston jumps in, um, but uh, it is the Arissa that we typically see on the defense from Ex Oblivione. But I, I want to like, go back to what you were saying before too about not even just maps and uh, had that EXO have played, but also compositions. This team has played like the most different heroes, I think, out of any single team in EMEA. And it shows with just how quickly they're able to adapt to the situation and figure it out versus whatever they're playing. Yeah, adapting on the fly. And I think that's what this, uh, the Malga patch is really been about, or the Mal hot fix, I should say, uh, has been about. It's just kind of <laughs> adapting over the next few days because the teams didn't really have that long to 
get used to this new patch. Just like, okay, we're scrimming on this one. Oh, okay, hotfix. Ah, okay, so what now? What, what do we do? Luckily, obviously, the meta had kind of developed in a way where Arissa was getting a little bit more playtime. So, we're, obviously, right now, we're seeing a lot more Arissa than we would normally, especially in the, the Mauga meta. Yeah, oh, just jumping into a brief pause. Shouldn't be too long here. Just making sure all the teams are good. All the teams are in the lobby right now, so maybe just a mouse issue or something like that. But we will be back into the game in just a moment here. And it does look like uh, on the defense, it's going to be EXO, and they were running the Orisa. Yeah, I was expecting to see that out of them, but it kind of goes back to what you and I were talking about. Even during the group stages, we see a lot of this Mauga, but where's the Orisa? It could be a very good answer to these Mauga compositions that have really popped up from the flower beds. And one of the things that makes the Orisa so strong is that she does have that fortify. She's very self-sustainable. Oh, yes. That spear spin, as we've seen Chase use, can close the distance on a support in the back, even shut off that healing. But then you've got Shockwave, which is just such a deadly weapon of destruction versus that Malga. And it didn't quite work out on Li Shang, but Twisted Minds are going to run out on the Malga comp once again. Yeah, Malga with the TP. I like that. Straight to point. Ignore the high ground. Shockwave super low already. Please, Shockwave needs some help. Looks like Canel was uh, nowhere nearby. Try and sling some off of her towards him. Also, Cookie is isolated too on the sidelines. Yeah, that's a that's a free kill for Twisted Minds right there. Uh, now, X of Livioni, they're just losing point. They're, yeah, they back up. They, they can't touch. You can't touch and they can't lose anybody here either because if you get staggered, then you also give up all of this space on high ground. Shockwave is back, but... This disruptor shot, this teleporter, look at how nasty that angle is. Yeah, especially for someone like Quartz who can just kind of look down upon you, shoot the Eraser a bunch, look at one of your supports, and boom. Insta headshot, insta kill. All right, they are... Pushing oh, up now, or at least X move in. It's gonna try and hold the choke here. They can, but this Disruptor Shot again is really just kind of keeping Ex Oblivione at bay from being able to go in and touch that cart uh, because you have to back up. Otherwise, you're taking too much damage. That damage DPS passive comes through to mitigate some of that healing that can come through from your team. So it's gonna be a bit of a wraparound as Ex Oblivione set up under Pylon. Yeah, this angle is kind of dirty as well. But Yubi should be able to uh, stop a lot of these crazy angles from uh, happening with uh, some TPs. Speaking of which, they CP straight to high ground as soon as they see Exolivion is rush. That was really nice from Yubi. TP up onto high. He's been so creative with all of those teleporters that we've seen from him. And I love being able to see just like even look at that. The kind of bait and switch there from the teleporter. Yeah, and then they use their own rush too. Forcing Ex Oblivione. Ex Oblivione should be able to get high ground here, but Yubi says, uh, absolutely not. Closes that door straight on him, or at least tries to. Duplication coming from Shockwave, and, well, uh, sorry, where are Twistum? Oh, yeah, they're all gone already. Uh, Yubi sets up yet another TP and just teleports away from Ex Oblivione again. The macro game for Twisted Minds right now is just superb. Is so good. And watching all of these teleporters in, expect these fights to be very fast. The overclock now from Quartz. I'm so scared if I'm ex oblivion. Oh, cookie, don't test him, brother. Although Quartz is very far away. So there's a couple of body shots and then sub. Oh, quick charge away. No TP. Well, they use it. I believe a couple of them at least use the teleport to get out. Still, I mean, ex oblivion are wasting a lot of time here, but. Twisted Minds are forcing Ex Oblivion to also use a ton of ults here. It's too bad that Yubi wasn't able to use that Photon Barrier to be able to defend with the Cookie ult, but they've got it here for this final point. Terror Surge is pretty big, does end up landing, but a lot of that damage is soaked up by the Sound Barrier, and then free Cage Fight on the point? I mean, Twisted Minds, my god. It's like they've uh, drilled this map seven times a day per scrim session, you know? <laughs> like, this is a masterclass of how to play Blizzard World with, te with teleporters. This is kind of a Twisted Mind specialty. They're one of the few teams that have played Blizzard World a few times. Like, you know, when we're in EMEA, it's always King's Row is the hybrid map of choice. But Ex Oblivione, Twisted Minds, even Space Station Gaming, these are the teams that have played Blizzard World the most, and that's really showing up here big for Twisted Minds. Cardiac Overdrive to push everybody forwards. Canal uses, whoo-hoo, uses the rush. Almost got, gets insta-killed, but would you look at that? Twisted Minds playing Portal 3 once again. They just TP back. <laughs> They're out of there. 
I thought we were all Blizzard World, not Portal, but hey, I'll take it. Uh-oh, Chase. I mean, wrong place, wrong time. No spin, no fortify, and no HP remaining. Twisted Minds just completely uh, bisecting Ex Oblivione. They're trying to, like, push up, like, peak corners, and then they just teleport in between them. It's... They're having a real rough time at this one. With three minutes and 40 seconds to go, two Twisted Minds are going to have an insane time back if they can just win this next fight. I mean, the payload is reaching its final destination, so I think you're very much able to do that, especially with Quartz's overclock. Now. Yeah, I mean, he's looking straight at the Lucio in the back. Has to be careful, though. That is a transformed Mauga in the back line. Nice little double stun there. Just KSA just running into Shockwave, so that copy is just nowhere to be seen anymore. Twisted Minds end up just rotating out once again. Just wait, calm, chill, relax, just for a brief moment before they end up engaging again. And I can imagine they're going to do it with a beat in a wall. That's 10% and a couple of percent away from Kelly's sound barrier. Yeah, exactly. They've got such good tools here to just section off the team once again. That wall has been so impenetrable. Oh, his cookie's time to shine, but now he has to contend with this wall. Which side does he pick? He picks the spawn side, and then Twisted Minds can sit on the other side of the wall. Pretty easy. Almost uh, let the payload go in there as well. The 0.43 meters to go, and Chase, the only one touching, and really the only one that can for Ex Oblivione. Okay, Yubi. I was not familiar with your SimTP game. That was ridiculous. Like, I just want to bring up a stat too, Rose, uh, from the last map. Um, Shockwave had three deaths with about 14k damage dealt. Yubi with 11. Yubi was dying a lot first time. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, Sim is going to do that. You have to play kind of close range. But in this kind of map, not control where you're fighting over a single point just constantly, um, where you can rotate around the map and then take the objective, Yubi is just putting on an absolute masterclass with the Sim. And uh, uh, maybe Yubi died once or twice. I, I don't know. I wasn't keeping track, but uh, I can guarantee you it was less than, uh, less than 11. That's a great point. I, we saw Yubi struggle to stay alive in their match versus Ents yesterday, but a lot of it was because Ents had identified that Yubi was going to be a pain, especially with the teleporter usage. He's able to take a lot of creative angles, and on a map like Blizzard World, to your point, you can play together as a team way better. So I really love Twisted Minds being able to show us what they are truly made of when they aren't being so tested by like a soldier and like Kai and you know, so on and so forth. Yubi was getting picked a lot in that series, but look at what he's able to do when he's got the rest of the team behind him. Looks like Yubi's going to switch it up too. He's playing the Tracer now instead. No Sim TPs. I mean, you're on defense. Does make a lot of sense. There's yeah. not too, I mean, if you really wanted to go with the Sim, you could like TP behind them and try and flip the map over and over and over again and try and cut people off. But Exit only running a fast comp, so probably wouldn't have worked out. So Tracer seems like the perfect pick here. Uh, Tracer 2, I mean, Yubi and Shockwave were dueling each other on their very first map of the series, so they might keep marking each other. But this is where Crispy has really had a chance to shine, is going with somebody like Shockwave, making that more of a dynamic duo and keeping Shockwave alive in order to get a bit more damage down. All right, KSA in a little bit of trouble in that bubble, so can't get a lot of heals. If they can Shockwave, apparently, just get smacked in the face by Yubi. Oh, Kellex a little bit too far up on the high ground, trying to boot people off. Quartz as well is going to suffer the same fate by the looks of it. The Tracer is down low, same with Slay. I mean, Chase could have ran away with that one. Slay was one melee off, uh, ended up going down, but all good. Savior was Yubi in that situation. Three minutes to go as both teams trying to collect their thoughts and regroup. Yeah, so Yubi not only able to pop off on the Symmetra, but also showing the prowess on the Tracer as well, which is something that we've come to expect from such a gifted DPS player like this, but really clutched up oh so that I still the okay. Ooh. See ya! That was I a mean, Kunai, that too. Kunai headshot with a couple of uh, Tracer Pulse pistol bullets <laughs> at your skull. Unfortunate. And they're pushing, uh, pushing for kills, which is always nice. Good stuff. Any kind of kill here is always nice. Get a little stagger, burn 5-10 seconds off the clock. Chase is going to spawn last here, and uh, Exoliviani's time back not looking the healthiest. Be healed. No, I mean, and more stall means that Twisted Minds just keep up the pressure. Ex Oblivione too, they have yet to be able to work up to an ultimate. They should get this Kitsune rush from Kanael to help initiate this fight, but I, Twisted Minds have three others that they get to rely on, yeah, including the rush of their own. I think it's a good point. Like, look, 
Twisted Minds will win a lot of these fights. They're doing more damage, so, you know, you get more ult charge. Except for Twisted Minds listening, though, into this next fight, a minute and 40 seconds to go for Explodione. Can go, can can go, go, can go, 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 you got a stack, man, especially with the South Baron, with the uh, with the rush too. Cage fight ends up getting rolled out here as uh, Chase, even with the Primal Rage, cannot live up to the damage to their health. The Primal Rage, it feels like you're just regular monkey in some of these situations, just getting locked down and then causes a fully charged railgun with the overclock. Just boom, 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 just lasering you. 50 seconds to go now. Ex Oblivione, Rose, they have two checkpoints, but that's about it. Uh, Twisted Minds, their comms, day and night from what we heard yesterday, they're so locked in, they're so together, they are on the same page, and they're also very, very vocal. You love to see that as just a big comeback here for Twisted Minds and their team coordination. But Exo, yeah, I mean, 30 seconds, one last touch, nothing in the bank in terms of ultimates. Shockwave trying to set up with a dive here onto this high ground. Slays in trouble, Swift steps away. Chase still with high ground control. UB with a pulse bomb lands the stick too, but it's actually Quartz that finishes off that kill. And down the majority of your damage now at Exo. Their supports are in trouble. They're in Snacks. Ramus and Kanael's already used that Suzu. There is a rush coming up soon, but they're probably not going to be able to make good use of it if they don't get on the points. They eventually push forward to it, but UB's on the flank and Kanael ends up just falling over. I mean, Slay is in a lot of trouble, yes, but I mean, KSA can just hold down this point here. This Pulse Bomb comes out, does manage to tag him too, and Shockwave with the last couple of bullets manages to take him out. Shockwave coming up, mad clutch with a kill on to UB2. I mean, zero seconds to go, Ex Oblivione with a skin of their teeth once again. Managed to cap that point. My word, they are dicing with death. They really are. That was coming down to the wire. I really thought that Twisted Minds were going to full hold that because of how dominant they were on that defense, constantly getting those first picks, sending Ex Oblivione back to spawn. And they also had no ultimate, so it had to be clutches off of just neutral kills. That could soon rush, though, too. Super coming in clutch here from Kanayo. We've seen that sometimes and time again, where those Kiriko can be such a big difference maker. But Chase, too, plays a little bit more aggressive, has that Primal Rage online, can help kind of smack Twisted Minds away. The word of the day right now for Twisted Minds is stack, and they are stacking on each other, trying to rotate around the map, but they're rotating straight into a, a Primal Rage. Chase, though, just get overrun. She just gets stopped on by uh, KSA. Pushed into the corner, and with this rush from Twisted Minds, it's going to be uh, tough to deal with for Exel Bivione, but they're on the wrong side of the rap, uh, map, remember, Rose? So, Yubi <laughs> and the rest of the gang have to get out. If they get staggered here, uh, Exel Bivione are going to get so much push, and here you go, here's Chase back from spawn. They kill Quartz. Kill Quartz, they kill Kellex. Now, if you really wanted to get out of there, you don't have the mobility to do so. Slide was off, so Twisted Minds were sitting ducks in that situation. And look at this isolation here of KSA as well. He's just barely to get out, but he can't even do that. It's another big pick in this fight. Oh, Sandbarrow hitting the wall there from Shockwave, looking like J3 out here, not landing that stick. Cookie ends up going down to Slay. Is Ex Oblivione, well touching the point almost that entire time, but it's Shockwave coming alive yet again. Only has to deal with this Lucio now, almost gets the one clip on him. Kellex with fancy footwork, we're not fancy enough for Shockwave. Luckily though, for Twisted Minds, they are going to put themselves on the point now with the spawn advantage. KSA pretty low, overrun around the corner, does receive the Suzu to stay up. UB and Quartz come back. That winner make a headshot should seal the deal there. 30 seconds to go for Ex Oblivione, as they have one more fight left. Wow, we, we see a lot of those last minute Widowmaker picks and out of the defensive spawn just to try to hold back and Quartz able to 
just have that impact right away to stop that capture. 10 seconds left. Chase doesn't have that initiative tool of that Primal Rage, so it's going to be on Cookie. Kanile, get in there. Make sure you're touching that payload. I mean, Quartz's Widowmaker is disgusting. He can snipe Cookie. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, flip that statement around real quick. Cookie just a little bit better with the Railgun. KSA still managed to take down one, though. Remember how close the spawns are, Rose. OT is here. His Exit Bavioni have lost their tank, so uh, Crispy and Cookie forced to touch the points. The overrun onto Cookie, and Yubi is there with the follow-up. Exit in OT, get shut down, and Twisted Minds take the map lead. The stack. Talking about the stack. Stack on me. We got the stack executed. Stack, stack, stack. It happened though, and it worked out so beautifully. You got the cage fight, you got the cardiac overdrive that can help to just make sure the team is going to be that much more healthy. And then you've got the Suzu on top. You're just not gonna kill that stack that's right on top of the point, especially if you're gonna have to walk into the sight lines of Quartz on that Widowmaker. That was always gonna be such a tough uphill battle for Exoblivione to climb in those fights final moments, but you've got just all of that overhealth and all of that shields and everything. Yeah, that point specifically is one of the hardest points to cap in the game, just because how close the attacker spawns are. And not only because of how close they are, but how close it is for a hit scan, a long range hit scan most of the time, to get a sightline onto the actual point itself. Like, that point is just awful sometimes to play into as an attacker if the payload is stuck just before that point. Oh man, Twisted Minds right now, Rose, up 2-0, match point. I mean, look, I was expecting this to go all the way and it might still do that, but it looks like a little bit of a shutout right now. x only may have played the most maps, you know, uh, across this event, but they might, their run might just be ended here. Well, if there's one thing that we've seen from Ex Oblivione is that they can compete in map five situations. Maybe it's going to be the next map type that'll help give them a bit of an edge. But right now, the DPS duels are going the way of Twisted Minds, and that's so important in a meta like this. Yubi just clutching on the Tracer courts as well, whether it's the Sojourn or the Widowmaker. I feel like pound for pound, they're just getting more damage down. Yeah, Yubi specifically has been just sick on this map. Switching from the Sim to the Tracer, the Tracer looked phenomenal, but his Sim play overall w was just ridiculous. Is the reason why they are able to cap so quickly and a lot of these points because of how well they are able to use the teleport. It's like, okay, we just TP away from the rush, TP away from the overclock, TP away from, oh, they copy, oh, we TP away from it. Like, it looks so good. And then, yeah, really sell, uh, stellar tracer blade towards the very end. I mean, Shockwave was doing uh, just the amount of weights he was lifting in that game, it felt like. The amount of times he was coming in clutch just wasn't quite enough. And okay, that's a bit of better of a KDA as well for a Twisted Minds. They win the map, get the better <laughs> KDA, right? Add more damage. Makes a little more sense. And they're feeling pretty good about themselves for sure, Rose. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that when I go think about these stats now with Twisted Minds having that KDA advantage, I then go back to what we saw on Li Shang Tower, our first map of the series, and go, but EXO, they were the ones in the driver's seat when it came down to the KD. That speaks to me that there could still be a close series on our hands, but after that performance on Blizzard World, I worry about Esperanza. I think Twisted Minds... They had to obviously go to this map because Coliseo got banned. Um, and I think when you look at the teleporter usage, if they want to continue to run the Malga as well as the Symmetra, this map fares so much better with all of the different buildings you get to play in. So it makes a lot of sense that they go in this direction. All right, maybe a more Malga on the table for Twisted Minds. Let's have a look at a small roster update, though. Ex Oblivione got a sub. Cookie out, Cloud in. What does this scream to you, Rose? Mm. Well, it makes that Cloud is going to come into play the Tracer, and now Shockwave is going to switch from the Tracer to a hitscan hero. This is something that we've seen a few times from Ex Oblivione, not necessarily because Cookie is doing badly, but that Ex Oblivione with this DPS lineup have a little bit more flexibility when it comes down to Cloud also being able to play the Tracer and leave Shockwave to make a couple more picks if it's the Ash or the Sojourn, even the Echo. There's a, just so much flexibility there and one of the reasons why he is one of the best flex DPS.
All right, well, we'll see if uh, it can be the difference maker. Of course, Esperanza is the map up next. Yeah, you really do need a, a Stellar Tracer right now. Maybe Cookie just wasn't cutting it at the moment. I mean, not looking too sharp on the Sojin head to head either right now, but I mean, it's hard to when Quartz is just just Quartz, I suppose. Like, that guy really impressed during World Cup, and he's been impressing ever since. Uh, definitely one of the best uh, hit scan players coming out of uh, the North, Amer North American. E I've been doing North America this whole this whole week. The EU region <laughs> is what I mean. So yeah, it's uh, looking really great so far for Twisted Minds and they're on map point. They're so close to locking their ticket into the finals going up against Ents, but X Blue Bionic, you know, what does everybody say? Comeback starts now. We're going to get the reverse sweep. The comms, they got to be electric, they got to be fire, they got to uh, just keep the spirits up because being down this uh, this early and also in the loser's bracket, it's got to play on your mental a little bit, but they're all pros. They've been here, they've done that. About to lock in for map number three, Esperanza, picked by Twisted Minds. It's always come backable, Jaws. So true. It's it's always. If you're in your rank game and you're losing, it's still come backable. Just form up the mental, strengthen the team camaraderie, and you've totally got this. So Exoblivione, they've been able to do that in a lot of their map five situations. Sometimes the map doesn't go their way, and they're like, no worries, we got this. Next one, all good. But <clears throat> I wonder then what Twisted Minds want to do and just like how Exoblivione are really going to play against that. I think the Chase Doomfist is one of the best looks that we have seen from Chase and the Winston is just so vulnerable and a lot of the dives you might want to take on this map we have seen it get obliterated if you take too long around that midpoint chase had some trouble yesterday being able to initiate a lot of these dives but the doomfist is just way faster and that power block too help you're just so survivable i i really uh that's a big slam god damn I like it when the Doomfist hits. I don't like it when I receive the Doomfist slam, but when a Doomfist hits five people with slam, it looks quite cool. <laughs> it looks quite sick. I, I really cool. like the uh, ramp, um, especially on this kind of map, especially with uh, Lucio. It's hard for really uh, the Doomfist to do much, but this is kind of kind of classic Doomfist on this map. You let them push the bot at least a little bit far, like maybe towards the underpass right, and then you try and get onto the back line, but it's all about forcing Quartz to use power slide forcing the Kiri to use Swiss Step or Suzu, and then kind of capitalizing on it. But they need to find an entrance here. And Quartz is so high up in the skies at the moment, it's going to be tough to do that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just go long, go the distance. A shockwave, though, too, has to be so careful because something that Slight oh, brings is just that long-range damage and uh, oof. Yeah, they kind of uh, lost this high ground. You saw Chase was trying to get on top of it. But as soon as Quartz puts himself on, on top of that, uh, Twisted Minds have to ascend on that. Otherwise, they are just going to get rolled onto the low. Like, that's a real rough spot to be in. And the Vortex does so much work against a lot of the members of uh, Ex Oblivion's comp, too. Especially that Doomfish just locking him down, bringing it back down to Earth. And like he's walking in quicksand, right? Mm, for sure. Oh my goodness, Shockwave so low though. Has a duplicate, so could actually duplicate the Ramatra here. Oh, unless it's being used to try and soften up the front line of Ex Oblivione. Oh, the copy on the ram. Uh, yeah, pretty scary. Pretty, pretty damn scary. A free annihilation. Almost. It'll close. 85% for, for Shockwave there. They managed to win that fight in about two minutes and at 49 meters. Not quite the checkpoint for Twisted Minds, but you're still happy with the push. You're happy with the push, but you're, I think you're even happier with, if you're Ex Oblivione that you did stop that point capture because now you get a chance to hopefully keep that from them. It's going to be a lot of keep away from the first point capture, especially on Esperanza. When you do get that first point unlocked, it just feels like almost game over in a lot of situations. Oh, oh okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. No whoa, way. Whoa. Okay, almost died to his own pulse. We didn't see it. All good. <laughs> it's not been the first time that's happened uh, live on stream. <laughs> my, my God. No, it is not. So no, it is not. <laughs> it's in a rush. Slay in a lot of trouble. One HP, pretty much. Yeah, it just goes down to the slam. Just Slay and Quartz there just tried to, to back up. But, I mean, the, the cooldown decrease with the Doomfist, that is disgusting stuff. Should be a pretty free kill on KSA. Dying pretty late there is not, uh, not the worst thing in the world. You stole the payload a little bit, but... Explore the only going to set up super far forward. Haven't got the rush available to them, but they could just beat into them if they wanted to and uh, force Kalex to use his. Ooh. 
Okay, oh, KSA is actually going to switch off of the Ramatra. It's going to be the Arisa now, and that is a little bit better so you don't just get punched into oblivion since you have the fortify but you are getting back to this point a little bit slower if calyx isn't there to help speed you in you can play under this bridge though that's where you'll see ksa set up but quartz oh. that was perfect just peeking over the edge knowing quartz is playing all the way at the back Chase pops the Meteor Strike, hunting for a target. B comes through. Chase, yeah, about a thousand HP to deal with now. Twisted Minds, gonna have to try and just stay alive, wait for this overhealth to burn off, but uh, not to be, especially with this duplication coming out onto the Tracer. Can they shake? Can they get this kill? I don't think so. No, surely not. Oh, duplicate pulse bomb. Goes wide, but you might as well throw it out. And then this is the <laughs> checkpoint for Ex Oblivione. Okay. They're in good stead now. Wow. Yeah, it looks great. It looks great for Ex Oblivione now. All coming up on that Doom Fist Chase has been able to play so aggressive, and they are marking these cooldowns. No fade from Moira. No recall from Tracer. No power slide from Quartz. Go after it. Oh, that was close. Staying alive with Shockwave. Only just still managed to get a kill. Oh, crispy! Oh my god. <laughs> That was ridiculous. 180 there from course. Okay, he ate a pulse. He ate a pulse. That's going to at least uh, give them a little bit of reprieve. And they've also stolen the bot heroes. So Exit Movie only are going to have to act, and they're going to have to act fast. UB does go down to a slam, so they are going to touch before the checkpoint gets uh, tagged. Coalesce is doing a lot, too. My word. Okay, Canel super low. They're just going to damage orbit? No way he dies to damage orbit. No, all good. Suzu, we're chilling, we're vibing. Skill Twisted orb. Minds Skill orb. Is, trust me, it's as scary as it looks, especially when it's fired by a pro. <laughs> KSA super low, here's the Rush Rose. Canal just on top of the point now. It's going to be a rough fight for Twisted Minds. And with Slay already dead, yeah, it's already over. Exoblivione just in completely different sorts right now. They look much improved going from uh, map number two to map number three. Going to have to push it past this checkpoint, regain control of those forward spawns too. Well, the nice thing about the Doomfist is that you don't have to go against the other tank. Like, you kind of ignore them. Arisa is not your problem. Arisa is not your focus. You're after that back line. Quartz is going to switch over to the Cassidy, so you do have a bit more pressure with something like the Mag Grenade to help burst down a target. But did you see, oh, did you see how much damage? That was close. <laughs> Let's go for a small Exo Lister, and they got a lot of ults coming into this fight. I'm going to stop playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on me. That's on me. That's on me. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm getting out. Let's play on the car. Everything is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming. I'm coming. Body hard. Body hard. Arisa one. 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 Nice, good shot. Yes, we won. Yeah, keep on. Keep on, keep on. Ghost him, ghost him, ghost him, ghost him, ghost him. Really nice disengage there, Rose. They end up backing out. They sp spot the Orissa, used all the cooldowns, and was like, well, he can just collapse on the Orissa now. Free pulse bomb, easy collapse. Ex Oblivione nearing that 100 meter mark. Yeah, KSA sadly could not eat that pulse bomb, but will go back to spawn to switch over to the Malka. Uh, so a bit of a compositional switch up here, but still pretty exploitable versus something like the Doomfist if you're not too careful. You could kind of just punch the Malka out and isolate him. Oh, I thought maybe going for UB there, but Quartz is definitely another good target. High Noon, surely gets punched out of that. Yeah, there was no way. You could just sneak up below him. Doom's in trouble, though. That Magnate hindering him, regardless of that uh, power block in place. Good four tap from Quartz, too. All right. A bit more of a... Uh, oh, I thought he's going <laughs> to... I thought he's just going to emote on the payload. You know, mad respect for that. <laughs> Twisted Minds on a little bit more of a comfortable comp, it feels like now, with the Malga. I'm a little bit more comfortable, but look at how those close spawns are going to affect the rest of this map. Exible Leone respawn just like that. They're back in the middle of the fight. They can play in this neutral, uh, but Twisted Minds still have their work cut out for them. They need this first checkpoint. There's only two minutes left, really. So win this next fight, win the next one too. I was really smart from Cloud there. 
Triple blinking onto the point to stop it from getting uh, too far. It does get away from them, but they've already killed Quartz. Very immobile. It oh my god, okay. Well, Grisby, wrong place, wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time for the Tracer too. Okay, Slay's just kind of holding it down with the Kiriko. Yeah, you can do that sometimes. If you hit the headshots, of course. Checkpoint. Okay, they end up capping it as well. Ex Oblivione, they're still finding kills with UB falling over. And remember, Ex Oblivione still have the lead here. So Twisted Minds, regardless of them capping, they've still got a long way to go. That's going to be Twisted Minds backing up as well. They do unlock those forward spawns, so it's going to be another neutral fight in the middle of Esperanza. But this bridge territory is going to be so important. And it's going to be Yubi switching over to the Symmetra as well, so Teleporter to also go in. Okay, okay. Shades of uh, Blizzard World. Okay, Quartz is already dead. Second fight in a row has been picked off first. TP, a little bit of fake he wanted to get onto the high ground. Chase gets chased, ironically enough, by the Sim. I mean, realistically, you want to get out of there anyway because of that rush. But now Shockwave trying to turn the tides of the war here as KSA just dives in onto the back line. But Shockwave is ready and waiting for him with that power slide. They're still juggling the point here, Rose. And this is very good for Exploivione. They're burning time. They're waiting for spawners to come back. They know Twisted Minds can't push. No, I mean, you're still uh, looking at Twisted Minds having to win two team fights in a row in order to take the lead back from Ex Oblivione, and they're running out of time. 40 seconds left now, sub 40, and Ex Oblivione can just play defensively with this bot. They don't have to throw everything in the kitchen sink at this one. Uh, they just they just have to win the fight. It's it, This is the last one, potentially. Yeah, they can make this last fight guaranteed, right? I mean, 20 seconds ago would be last fight anyway, but they can just guarantee an OT just holding up here. They don't need to push. They don't need to press the issue. They got 40 plus meters uh, in the lead right now. 10 seconds to go. KSA nearing that cage. And that teleport is going to put them under the bridge and actually just uh, zips past Ex Oblivione. But here's the rush. KSA in trouble. Cage comes in, but making good use of it. Uh, no, KSA is not. He does receive the sound barrier. Yes, but Quartz is dead yet again. The carry for Twisted Minds falls over. And Ex Oblivione are just roundhousing Twisted Minds right now. This is a very different look from Ex Oblivione. The substitution of Cloud coming in and coming up clutch. Ex Oblivione are going to take us to a map number four now. Sometimes it takes just a little bit of a change up there, maybe get a fresh perspective, a fresh player into the roster. And we really saw the amount of flexibility that Ex Oblivione had in real time with this particular DPS duo. We know what Cookie can do on the Soldier, right? We've seen it in action time and time again for the main stage as well as the group stage. But when you do have Cloud in that roster, you get to play the Tracer and then Shockwave gets to go crazy on basically any hero under the sun. So fantastic set from Ex so and it looked so good yeah i mean picking off quartz three times in three fights like oh, they're picking them off first dude it's not even like just randomly throughout the fight like that is perfect play from ex oblivione like quartz is uh, one of the star carries for that team and you got to shut him down at some point and why not first right if you can get a stick if you can get a railgun from across the map very different ex oblivione right now as we uh, go into map number four next row suravasa is going to be up next Ooh, that's exciting. I feel like Suravaso just flashpoints so much chaos and really plays into the strength of both of these teams. So I feel like that one's going to be an absolute banger. Uh, but when we look at just how much impact all of the DPS players had, it's really no secret as to why they were the target focus of both of these teams. Even Yubi, right? With the Symmetra or the Tracer, Yubi was such an annoyance in the backline. And having the Symmetra felt like it was a really big boon to this Malga composition, but it also left some of your teammates vulnerable if you're not able to stack on top of each other, and especially when you have to play the payload. Quartz isn't necessarily able to do that with something like the Sojourn. Ooh. Like, uh, KD, yeah, gap is wow. pretty big. I mean, only 40 meters separated them, but it was Exo really uh, just kind of taking over the game. Suravasa as well, and I like that you brought up uh, the strengths of both teams because I think Twisted Minds, especially with UB playing the Sim, I think it's a very good map to play the Sim on. And uh, KSA, not much success on the Malga on that map specifically, um, and the Ram too for that matter. But he can just be so much, uh, he could just be so much of a menace and just enabled by the teleports from UB. So we'll see what they end up wanting to play on this next one. 
but Twisted Minds might have the edge here with how fast and how good they are as a team rotating with the Sim TPs. Um, Sure, Vasa too, being uh, like kind of thinking about how the maps uh, or the points, sorry, are laid out, especially that first one. You can just kind of ping pong back and forwards if you really want to. That gap doesn't really need to be closed quickly. We're just like, okay, TP to your back line. We'll TP back if we need to. Like, and a lot of the points, to be fair as well, have these small little high grounds that you can kind of take control of too. I'm like, I'm just going crazy with the moves here. Uh, but that's how you play Sim. You just like TP here, TP here, TP here, TP here. Um, but yeah, Sir Vasa, it looks like a good match move. for. Uh, put that emote in the game for Sim. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Let's have a listen to the winning <laughs> comms, though. Ex Oblivione, they're coming back in this series. Let's see how the final few moments uh, ended up getting breaking down for them. Nice, man. We fucking we were nice. We were three, bro. Comms sounding great, look. They're back in, they're locked in. And I'd be surprised if we see a substitution here. Obviously, we'll find out in a minute. Suravasa is up next. Twisted Minds, one control, worth keeping in mind. Uh, although, Suravasa, Flashpoint, not control, but extremely similar in how it ends up playing out. Wouldn't be too surprised, Twisted Minds, just roll out UB on Sim. Put KSA on the Malga, which is extremely good at. Mm -hmm. And then just have uh, just the, the classic backline, the Kiri, the Lucio, and then just roll out Quartz on. Well, just Quartz can play whatever he wants. He's too good. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so true, though. <laughs> Actually, whatever Quartz plays, it's great. Now, I have no notes for it. Uh, but yeah, for Suravasa, I agree with you there about the Symmetra. And I think one of the things that Ex Oblivione we have seen they can kind of struggle with is just how quickly they can take engagements. They are very easily able to give up space which means on flashpoint they are giving up a lot of percentage based on how fast those flashpoints really can tick up in progress and uh li shang i'm just thinking back to li shang you know i've got flashbacks to the positive kd there for exo but the map loss from all of the <laughs> right. point progress they gave away hey, if they can do it once they can do it again it's all good does it, your KD doesn't matter. If you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. You know, like it doesn't matter. <laughs> and sometimes you're just a target as well, right? I mean, UB was a big target in map number one. He racked up a lot of deaths, but a lot of the time that was just EXO. Like we just got to kill this guy. We, we've got to get him. We've got to make sure they can't get some crazy wacky TPs off. And you know, sometimes the, the KDA really doesn't paint uh, the whole picture. Or almost ever in Overwatch, I'd argue it's um, it's a tough metric, especially looking at individual players. Overall, as a team, you know, it uh, mm -hmm. paints a good picture. But individually, uh, not so much. All right, Twisted Minds on the red side, Ex Oblivion on the blue, and it will be okay. You be with a TP. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense here. I'm surprised we're seeing Ex Oblivion here run out with the Moira. Again, I still think the Kiri's just a little bit better with the Suzu, but looks like they want to try and play fast, just wall someone off with Cloud's May, and then just run at them. Or even wall the TP too. Well, you also have the Ramatra as well. Yeah, I mean, like, you have the Ramatra, the, the May. I remember Cloud's May being so good for Team Finland. And you are able to not only wall off the teleporter, but you can also just wall off Quartz. That had a little bit of trouble. God, I'm surprised it didn't block there. Okay, there's the block, I was going to say. Quartz taking an alternate angle. Trying to get away. He does so with about 50 HP remaining. TP active once again, UB jumping in, jumping out, classic like sim TP strats. And there's the wall, Cardiac Overdrive will help uh, KSA live, at least for the time being. Twisted Minds did end up getting the cap as well. So another kind of annoyance will be them just being able to insta disengage, insta re-engage, but they disengage for a little bit too long and will be Ex Oblivione finding this flip. Except finding the flip, they get control as well. They are forced to use the ice blood, so Cloud is not going to have that recovery option for a little bit. But look at that, the nice teleporter. Suzu. Everybody is so low. Good, Suzu. Coalescence doing a lot of work in the front line, but is it enough? Kellex going down to a disruptor shop, and there's the sound barrier from Crispy. And with Kellex there, you know you're not going to worry about a single sound barrier coming out, an amp or anything. So they can just focus it down. KSA trying to just like get this off me. Like look at trying to find Crispy, who's just like pummeling in the in the back of the head with the uh, with the donuts there. Exclusively the only that whole time as well. Rose had the point, so this might just be last fight here for Twisted Minds, but they got a lot of tools to try and uh, take this point. 
They do. I, I, you're looking at like Quartz's overclock, but these angles have been very difficult for Twisted Minds to find. Ex Oblivione have played way more predictive in terms of where they think that teleporter is going to pop up and super quick to react when they do see somebody actually go through that teleporter. But here's the overclock. Ooh, good wall. Uh, stops KSA getting the overrun into the back line. This course is time to shine. Always feels that way. The Herb Clock doesn't really find much. There was a Railgun charged up, and what a good wall from Yubi. Stops any damage coming in, and Shockwave's Overclock just negated completely, and uh, Twisted Mind still have Sound Barrier, and they get the point. Here comes the Cage. KSA in trouble. Tries to get the overrun away, but no. That Blizzard. I mean, the Cage is like, oh, you're not locked in here with me. You're locked in here with... I'm locked in here with you, or, or something like that. Sound Barrier comes out from Kellex to try and touch at the very last moment, but... Yeah, not to be. That will be Ex Olivione capping at the first point. A couple of little stagger kills coming in pretty late. I, stagger kill? Okay, a stagger kill onto Chase. Okay, not someone. Okay, no one else die. All good. Okay, Slay comes back and just kills Cloud. Not the cleanest cleanup I've ever seen. In fact, Kellex also kills Canale. So, okay, Ex Olivione, they do end up capping. You'd expect them to clean house here, but um, Twisted Minds actually come up with the kills and they're going to get a fast rotation to next point. Okay. <clears throat> that I wasn't expecting that. Uh, all the scrappiness, though, from both of these teams, I, it comes up in favor of Twisted Minds. They are able to get this flashpoint first. I, they do not believe there's going to be a recontest here from Ex Oblivione to stop this capture. Oh. And so there you go. And as they walk in, Quartz able to get the headshot there onto Shockwave. So Ex Oblivione, they have no choice here but to disengage. Otherwise, they run the risk of getting picked off before Shockwave can come back. All right, KSA doing the smart thing there, going for the small retreat. So he doesn't get walled off. KSA just, he can't really that uh, play that far up as much as he really wants to, just uh, with fear of the wall, especially on this point where it is so enclosed. Coalescence, okay, focusing Kellex. Kellex went pretty low, but a TP onto the other side makes Canal just a 180 there. I mean, the Lucio is still taking a lot of damage. Same with Canel, that's to fade into the back line. And there is the Annihilation, but not for Canel gets sniped out of midair. That Annihilation getting absolutely nothing done for Ex Oblivione. A Swiss of Mines find a swift team kill. And the point too. This shouldn't be a, this shouldn't be a touch for Ex Oblivione, no way. No, I, I, I wonder there if a Crispy would have liked to use the sound barrier just to make that Annihilation a little bit more impactful, but you don't have it now, and you can even see Ex Oblivione um, debating, debating whether or not they even want to go in at all here, but it's going to be a quick amp it up to go to the next flashpoint and start getting set up here in Palace, and I guess that's where the sound barrier can kind of come in clutch if you are worried a bit about something like... Uh, the, I guess, cage fight from KSA, but I feel like Ex Oblivione, they've got some really great options just outside of having an ultimate to deal with Quartz. Not only the May Wall, but also the Ramatra Shield can block off those sight lines and force Quartz to potentially use a power slide to find a different angle. There's ways to shut it down outside of the photon barrier that Yubi has on the flip side. Right, yeah, and getting that reposition can be pretty deadly because you're pretty vulnerable after that. Or taking a small off angle. Trying to find a headshot. Hits one body shot, instantly rips the overclock. There's another overclock on the other side of things. Shockwave. And Cloud just receiving that overhealth from the sound barrier, so they're not going to get insta destroyed by the railgun, but UB will. A TP onto the high ground. Thought he was behind cover, but he wasn't not quick enough at the very least. KSA overrun into the back line. It's Twisted Minds now. They do kind of, I mean, they do end up getting a couple of little kills here, but it should just be the cleanup. There it is. Ex Oblivione capping this point first. Okay. Cage fight, though, for Twisted Minds. They can come back in and use that. But as we saw the, from the first time that KSA used that ultimate, Cloud just pops the Blizzard on top. It totally negates the ultimate. We actually saw that combination of ultimates when we saw Aya oh, yeah, go for the Mei and the Mauga themselves, having the Blizzard to combo with their own cage fight. But it's a defensive tool here for Ex Oblivione. Love it. Yeah, this rush versus the Coalescence. Unfortunately for Slay, it's not online just yet. Good wall, too. I mean, that cage fight's really nice if you can provide support to the Mauga, but Cloud with just the ice wall completely stops any sort of healing or speed or whatever, Suzu, whatever, from getting through. 
gonna kill him, and uh, again, this might be the last fight here on this point. There is still a chance to touch. They aren't too far away from it, but it's gonna be a tough one if they uh, manage to do so. With 20% to go, Twisted Minds are gonna have to make their mind up fast, and with a kill onto Kaneo, who was just on high ground like that. Okay, now you definitely touch. Now you might just win this right here. Yeah, and Slay has the Katune Rush too, just in to ensure a victory if they want oh, it. that's not good. Okay, might be okay though. Turret MVP for UB there. Just uh, frying Crispy a little bit. All right, there's the point flip. Oh, the little shot. Oh, okay, letting the turret kill him. <laughs> Fair enough, all right. You're all right. Thought MVP. about it. <laughs> yeah, actually, he did, yeah. He charged out the right click, was like, nah, I'll let the turret kill him. More disrespect that way, you know? More BM, I like it. I think so. <laughs> Pops up in the Elam feed that it yeah, turned, killed exactly. you. Very funny. Maybe maybe not for uh, <laughs> Shockwave, but still. Well, Exoblivione, while they do have to give up control of that Flashpoint, they get to come in with the Annihilation, this time with the Sound Bearer at its back if he wants it. Plus, Shockwave has another Overclock, this time this without ends. Yubi yeah. having that Photon Barrier in line. Shockwave just carrying behind this pillar. Same with the rest of Ex Oblivione right now. A perfectly timed to be there for Crispy saving Shockwave and Cloud. However, once again, this wall from UB is going to be quite frustrating for Ex Oblivione to get through. As you can see, everybody just uh, happy to just fight on the ground now because they got that giant wall to hide behind. And uh, with Twisted Minds taking this point, I mean, 90%. Shockwave gets one kill, sure. I mean, Cloud with another one. But is it going to be enough? Another UB turret kill? Really putting in the hours right now with these turrets. They should definitely get, uh, be getting paid overtime. Time, at least uh, at least a little bit. Shockwave ends up sliding up to high ground. There's a Doom Fist for Chase to try and get yet another touch. It looks fairly even until Quartz said no. And the Twisted Minds, that'll be two points in Suravasa. One point away from taking the series and locking their place in the Grand Finals. Oh, this is so close. Ex Oblivione, they had to give up so much there in order to try to find the victory. The Doomfist now getting changed back over to the Ramatra to make their way over to this tiny little flashpoint. We've got ruins. This is great sight lines here for the Sojourns, but Ex Oblivione have more tools in their kit with the Ramatra and the May to shut off Quartz's sight lines. All right, want to put on the pressure pretty early. Does Kaneo and the rest of the team, they use that coalescence, but a lot of assists in that kill feed kill. As Cloud ends up going down to some stray Cheerios, some donuts, whatever you want to call them. This point's going to be so hard for them to take now, especially without Cloud. Their only real tool to try and stop KSA getting away with murder right on the uh, on the Malga. And so Twisted Minds are able to just run over them. You haven't really got much sustain left and like uh, no wall and this might be it. Nice little stagger. Surely he doesn't get a kill. No. Really nice stagger, in fact. Twisted Minds making sure Shotwave paid every single second he was alive there. Oh, man. I mean, that gives Twisted Minds just so much flashpoint progress, knowing that Ex Oblivione have to regroup. Cloud, you are dancing with fire right there. I don't know why you would stick your head out if you see Quartz across the way, but hey, I, maybe if you're able to get a quick pick here. But Shockwave is back. Has the Disruptor shot out, Ex Oblivione, they got one chance and they're walking into that cage fight. What a cage from a KSA there. They just, uh, you just set Quartz off for success. Already got three kills, looking for more. Shockwave in his sights, there's another one. Give him the ace, sure, why not? I mean, also you're staggering right now. I mean, we're up to 80% and the Ram, oh, gets pulled back to spawn. Kinell with a clutch life weaver pick. Actually grabs him back, but have they got enough time here? There's one person to touch for Ex Oblivione, but they're not gonna survive all too long. Crispy's on there, does trigger, no, he doesn't trigger OT. He manages to get pooped away and Twisted Minds take the series three to one and book themselves to the finals against Ents. That was a clean map. Sir Vasa was just theirs. From the get-go, Twisted Minds had a great idea of how they wanted to play out those points. The Symmetra pick right away, the Mauga as well. Stack, 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 stack. And that Ramatra composition just wasn't enough to do the same value stacking as we saw from that Mauga. Yeah, that cage at the very end was just sublime. As Crazy. the entirety of Ex Oblivione tried to like, just basically flood out near to the point. It was like, okay, 
lock them down, and then Quartz just sat on high ground with the railgun. It was perfectly played there from a Twisted Mind to lock in their ticket to the finals against Ents in, in just moments. I mean, wow, what a series from Twisted Minds. And it looked like Exploder only had a little something there on uh, Esperanza on the push map, but not to be. Twisted Minds with the W. Three and one, the series score overall. And uh, Desk, what do you make of that series? Great. Thanks, Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Joss. <laughs> no, I mean, I, it's great stuff from Twisted Mind. I mean, I think you guys, we all talked about it. Going into the match, how clean they're going to be looking, how scary they're going to be uh, for EXO, and it came true. I think there's a couple adaptations I really noticed from Twisted Minds in this series that I really liked is, number one, whenever they do play the rush comp with the sim, right, they're ult kiting. We talked about the casters. When the ults come out, something like Kitsune Rush, so powerful when you're able to fight in it. But Twisted Minds doesn't give their opponents that opportunity. They're TPing out, they're speeding out, Malga overruns out. They have so many options to kite. And so, so many of these ult cycles from the other team that, that should be dominant team fight wins, they just get nothing. You, you know, you're fighting, you're fighting your demons because Twisted Minds won't give you any type of value on the ult. So I think that's giving them a ton of value. And then I think even more important than that was the adaptation of bringing out Yubi on the tracer when it's those echo dive comps, right? We saw Kevster and Kai against Ents, where the echo and Sojourn are just free casting on you. They're doing so, so much damage and eventually you're getting overwhelmed. I think the tracer is gonna be crucial for Yubi to start to contest that. Kevster is not gonna be able to do nearly as much on the echo when there's Tracer constantly hunting him down. And Tracer actually has a, a sort of a sleeper synergy with Mauga. If you come grab that lifesteal buff from next to the Mauga, you go off on your merry way, you hold the buff, and you just become this incredibly hard to kill target as Tracer with lifesteal. Uh, it's kind of a scary, scary concept to think about to trying to take a flank fight uh, yeah. against a hero like Tracer who's already so potent in those spots. Yeah, before we take a look at the match highlights, let's quickly listen in on the uh, winning moments uh, from Twisted Minds. Take a look. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I can do it. I have to be out. I have to be out. I have to I mean, great stuff all around from Twisted Minds. I think that the DPS duo is just deadly and that last uh, boop at the end was amazing as well. Yeah, I mean, this is a Twisted Minds team that is looking better than they did yesterday and I do give them a pretty good chance against NC Esports now. Twisted Minds were the established number one in EMEA going into OWCS. And I feel like yesterday, NC Esports kind of dethroned them a little bit. But a chance for revenge here now. You gotta keep in mind, Twisted Minds, last year, they dominated in the True. European region. And so they've held this European crown for so long now that it's not until NC Esports now with maybe some of the Overwatch League players coming back, like Kevster, Kai, for example, giving them that chance to take down a team like Twisted Minds. But in this series, though, we do gotta say uh, good job to X Oblivion. Right. Top three here mm -hmm. in OWCS. Huge upset yesterday against Space Station Gaming. And really, it, it was like competitive series. You know, we were we were on that Flashpoint map on Surabasa, and we're like, hey, maybe this would go to a map five. Uh, they're really going toe to toe against a team like Twisted Minds, right? And a lot of these players haven't been established tier one Overwatch esports players, right? Cookie, Crispy, Canal, they were not in the Overwatch League. Shockwave, obviously instrumental for this team in that carry role as a damage player. But this is a feel-good story. These are people who were given an opportunity here in OWCS in this open system, the Swiss format, leading into the group stage. And they got an opportunity to compete against some of the very best teams in the region. And they did one heck of a job. Now you get top three, lots of circuit points there to maybe qualify for DreamHack Dallas in the end. So really, you got to give credit to Exoblivion for making it this Double far. points for stage two. Double points too. <laughs> I think Exo is definitely going to be back hunting for those with great performances from whether the lesser known players or uh, established vets like Shockwave. I think they have a lot to build on. I don't think they really need to go back and make too many changes. Maybe, you know, in the end, this meta with, with the rush being so dominant looks great for Twisted Minds, but Exo on the dive was, was very sharp with a lot of threats, a lot of options on the team, and very good flexibility from Chase really keeping these things together. I do feel like, though, for Twisted Minds, the addition of Kellex on this team, every time we hear him in the comms, I mean, he's keeping things very calm and clean. And these are the clutch moments, right? This is you winning a huge series. So to be able to, like, stay calm, crucial, that's a great value Kellex adds to the team. 
Yep. And we're taking a look at the player of the match, and it is going to go to UB. You were talking about how great his Tracer was and how he's going to be playing an important role for the Grand Finals match that's coming up next, right? It's so interesting. I think he really is the linchpin of the team strategy today, and, and I think he will be as well against Ents because whether if he's on Sim, the whole comp is going to play so differently, right? Even though that's the only hero you have to change from the Mauga um, strat to be playing, whether you're playing Sim or Tracer. With Sim, you're playing around these ult fights, you're playing around TP disengage. This barrier wall is incredibly potent when you fight around it. Really enables Mauga to not worry about his lack of, you know, damage mitigation when he's got a shield wall to play. However, sometimes that Tracer, I think, could be an, a much stronger pick, especially if the enemy gets too greedy with these DPS. They want to run Sojourn Echo, so much range spam. Even just one Tracer in the comp, now you start splitting up a lot more. Maybe the Kiriko follows your Tracer in. These flanks become deadly. That could open up more of the map for Quartz to work with, and we've seen what he can do with just a little bit of space. So these two picks, the Sim and the Tracer, it seems subtle to just change one hero, but really this opens up the comp to play two completely different styles of Overwatch with only one hero swap. Historically, that is a very potent tool to have in your pocket as a team because the enemy team might need to completely 180 their style and their heroes, and all you're doing is changing one hero back and forth. That's giving you a huge edge in the ultimate economy game, and with, with how important that is in the current meta with, you know, Sound Barrier, with, with Kitsune Rush, I mean, Overclock, you do not want to be swapping your heroes all the time. And if Twisted Minds can force that kind of response from Ents, I don't know if what worked last time for Ents will work again. What do you think, Johnny? Do you think it's going to work or is it not going to work? I mean, I, I mean, we'll get closer to that finals matchup in a little bit. True. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm a bit cautious about putting Yubi on Tracer facing off against Kevster. You know, I actually do think the Twisted Minds, you like the Symmetra. It's what worked for you for the longest time. It's one of Yubi's strengths. And I feel like if you are going to beat NC Sports, you have to play the Symmetra, even if it is unfavorable at times. I feel like outplaying the opposition with map positioning and teleporting around, that probably is, is what going is giving you give you the advantage in a series against Ants. All right, let's quick let's take a quick look at our brackets one last time. We're heading into the final match, the grand finals. What a week! What a week! Those were all the matches that were played in the main stage, stage one. We got some great matches, but it all ends with this final one, the Grand Finals, Team Ents versus Twisted Minds. This is the matchup we were waiting for, all stage long as well, NC Sports, you know, previously Owl Spray Check, uh, Booba Spray Check, and uh, then we were picked up by NC Sports yeah. mid-stage, of course. This has been kind of the star team in the region after the success we saw from Team Finland at the World Cup, picking up the likes of Kai and Kevster, an incredible damage line. Now you face off again against Twisted Minds, who has held the crown of EMEA throughout all of 2023. So a matchup in the making, and we're finally getting it to the Grand Finals. And it's just like, it's a, it's a rematch just from yesterday mm, and nice. like now we really don't know you know can ends beat them again or is it going to be twist in mind uh being crowned the champions right all right uh before we go into that match we're going to give a little bit more time for twisted mind because that was uh you know i'm pretty sure they need some rest before we'll they go, grass, go into yeah go touch some grass drink some water no get touching, ready just talk about overall <laughs> Sure, why not? Uh, while, while we give them some time to, you know, recuperate, uh, remember you guys chat, uh, we asked you guys for the uh, Superstar Chat winner uh, in the beginning of the show. And here were the nominees. We had Kai, Kevster, Shockwave, and Funny Astro. I think for all, all four of them, you know, they are all great players, but you guys made the decision and the winner was... Yes! Yes! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, baby. Everybody's talking. None other than Come on, Ants come Kester. on. Everybody's Sveria. shocked. Nobody wow. saw it coming. Wow. Let's go. Honestly, I'm a bit shocked. I think Kai had a really good chance as well. That's fair. That's but, fair. But it we is. Didn't, we didn't coordinate our nominees. I do feel like Twisted Minds got got a little a little yeah, captain not giving anybody. Yeah. You know, I feel like you know there are a lot of honorable mentions to a lot of those Twisted yeah, Minds guys. That's true. We probably should have nominated some of them. <laughs> Given that they're they're our top <laughs> two now. Maybe Quartz. I blame Jaws. I blame Jaws. Jaws should have nominated someone from 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 Twisted Minds. <laughs> Yeah, it's your fault. It's your fault, buddy. Say That's sorry. Fine. Blame somebody else. Blame somebody else. We did our <laughs> job, but you did it first. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, let's talk about Kevster. We I mean, got he, to. We got We to. all know how great of a player he is and like how flexible uh, of a player he is. And that played a really huge role in for, uh, for a team end, right? I mean, that last series, I think, really showed something I mentioned on the desk, which is that, right, like replicating the success of Kevster and Kai playing against Twisted Minds, it's easy to watch this and be like, yeah, just grab my, my Echo Kill your, your Sim every single fight back to back to back. 
But actually doing that is so insanely hard, right? There's so much team protection coming in from Twisted Minds. They're not leaving these players hanging on the flank, right? You know, Kepsu's just hitting everything on Echo. <laughs> and like, if he does that, if he plays perfect, maybe you can't play around it. But it's such a huge ask for a player to be as consistent, as dominant as Kepster. I mean, I can't think of a hero more perfect than Echo for Kepster because that's his strength. He can play anything. I mean, this yeah. guy copies yeah. tanks. He knows exactly what to do. He's still getting max value on those heroes. He plays everything in the game. I mean, I've seen, like, he queues support. He's like, could be top 10 on support. Some of these players, like, they're just different talents. The, I, I promise you, Kepster could play support or tank and be on an elite pro team. I'm pretty sure like, they're I, He really can. Like, that is very rare. Can you copy this? Uh, can you copy the Lucio? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a team can player. You He'll do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, copying Mauga, Cardiac Overdrive, yeah. get it going. That Setting is up Kai. just OP, honestly. Yeah, that is OP. That is OP. I yeah, love doing that. Fun. It's so satisfying. You fight the other Mauga, you're like, how does it feel, bro? Like, <laughs> like it. it it always amazes me watching these kind of players like Kevster who could play all like so many different heroes in the highest level, mm. right? And it's just like amazing to me how like talented these these guys are. It's yeah. it's unreal. I will say I think his challenge I'm in this so far away from in, that. In this <laughs> next series. Scary. Yeah, it's like a it's like a different a different world. I see people yeah. that do this. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think I can do that. I'm no. not gonna play. I'm not gonna play for that. I'm gonna I'm a team player. I'll play. I'll do my job. We can apply ourselves as hard as we possibly could. No, and no, we'd you, never even get there. You gotta start. We gotta go back in time about ten yeah, years we, to be to be. Yeah, that is level. true. We are old heads. Well, you're, you're gonna say that I could go back twenty years. I I probably still <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta believe in yourself, Dan. But Kepster, I think he's got his work know. cut out for him next series. Yeah. I think I think Twisted Minds has retooled a little bit. I mean, you mentioned the Sim being strong, but I don't think Yubi needs to 1v1 beat Kepster on Tracer. I don't think that maybe is even possible for many people. But if he just forces Kepster off the Echo to a Tracer Mirror, yeah. that might be enough, right? Maybe. Take some of the damage off the field. No more Echo Copy yeah. Mauga on the field. Much less spam damage. No focusing beam. No focusing beam. Some yeah. of these kills, like even if you're just dueling Kepster and you don't die, that could be enough. That could be enough because Twisted Minds, yeah. Twisted Minds hits very, very hard with their rushes. And I, I mean, I wonder, I think they've adapted really well. I think what they've shown is exciting to me. And I think we might get a close grand final, even though oh, Enz took that, that upper bracket final. Yeah. All right, everyone, the time is almost upon us. We're going to crown our first OWCS stage champions with the EMEA grand finals up next. We'll be back right after this break.